Good morning, St. Croix fans. My name is Jason Helfen, and I own a company that's called the Technological Angler. And for the last 12 or 15 years or so, our company has had focused on one mission, and that is to teach anglers just like you how to leverage the power of their onboard marine electronics to find and catch more fish, have more success on every trip. Now, over that 10 or 12 year period, we've had one key question that comes up for all of our, uh, from all of our guests. And that is this question that we're gonna see here on the first slide. Is that a fish? As we look at our, uh, at, at our sonar information that we're getting, and here you're looking at a combination of Humminbird side imaging at the top, Humminbird traditional 2D sonar in the lower left, and Humminbird down imaging in the lower right. What we see here is an, enor an enormous mass of fish, right? And what I'm gonna teach you in today's seminar is how to conclusively identify fish in lots of different sonar techniques, whether it's traditional 2D sonar that dates back all the way to the days of the Lawrence Green Box, to modern contemporary techniques like side imaging, like we see up here at the top, or even 360 imaging or live imaging that provides us with real-time information about structure and fish. All of these tools, no matter which you happen to have on your boat, will help you be more successful on the water when you learn to answer this one key question. Is that a fish? Now, the, uh, the, the discussion will begin with traditional 2D sonar because that's really where everything all began back in the 1950s when Lawrence introduced the original green box, the first consumer level sonar unit. The same technology that was present in the green box 70 years ago is still present in all of our fish finders today, okay? The Lawrence green box is based on traditional 2D sonar. And to identify fish in traditional 2D sonar, we're looking specifically for arch-shaped returns. So when we look at our 2D sonar view here, we've got a hump that's over there on the left-hand side, a transition off to deeper water, and we see scattered across the top of that hump, and especially over in deeper water, large number of arch-shaped returns. Each of those arch-shaped returns is a fish. And we can understand why fish show up as arches in traditional 2D sonar when we go and look at the next slide. The next slide is gonna have functionally a little cartoon that's gonna show you a fish moving through a traditional 2D sonar beam. Now, traditional 2D sonar is the only technique in which that sonar beam, that beam of sound that is broadcast into the water is broadcast in the shape of an upside down ice cream cone. It's really narrow up at the top. You can see right by the stern of that boat as it moves from left to right across the screen, that's where the transducer is. The sonar beam is narrow at the top and it expands like an upside down ice cream cone as it travels through the water column. The traditional 2D sonar beam is wide. Fish can spend a lot of time in that beam. That's in part why fish show up as arches. So let's begin by looking at that fish as it enters the beam. When that fish enters the beam, its distance from the fish to the transducer is at its maximum value. And so that arch is gonna start with a slope downward. So we have a large distance between the fish's body and the heart of that, of that transducer. Now, when the fish is in the middle of that beam, the distance from the fish to the transducer is at its minimum value. So the true depth of that fish, when we look at the arch, is at the very top of the arch. That's how deep that fish is in the water column. Now, as that fish passes out of the beam, again, we get to a, uh, we get to a situation where the distance from the fish's body up to the transducer is at a large maximum value again. And so we have that arch sloping down, sloping down on the backside of that fish as well. That entire arch-shaped return represents a fish, but the true depth of that fish is at the very top of the arch. Now, only traditional 2D sonar, well, traditional 2D sonar is the only technique that broadcasts its sonar beam in this arch shape. And as a result, this is the only technique in which fish are gonna be showing up, or in this cone shape, this is why we're only gonna see fish showing up as arches in traditional 2D sonar. Now here I show you 
a side-by-side -side view of a couple of 2D sonar returns, one that is collected with a low frequency wide beam and one that is collected with a higher frequency narrow beam. So on the left, we have an 83 kilohertz beam that has what's called a 60 degree cone angle. That's the angle at the very top of the, of the ice cream cone. So it's really wide. That 60 degree wide beam covers a lot of water. So when we use low frequency traditional 2D sonar with a wide cone angle, we cast a large net. And as a result, we see lots and lots of information from that return. We can see a very busy traditional 2D sonar return on the left-hand side. We look at the right-hand side, we see a display with fewer fish returns. That's because we're using a higher frequency beam with a more narrow cone angle of 20 degrees. It's a more narrow ice cream cone up at the very top. It's covering less water. We're gonna see fewer returns. So that's one significant difference between low frequency and higher frequency traditional 2D sonar, the amount of water that those two beams cover. Another really important difference comes from the frequencies of those beams themselves. So we're looking at 83 kilohertz versus 200 kilohertz. In general terms, as the frequency of a sonar beam increases, its resolution will also increase. Think about that word resolution as being target separation. As the resolution of the beam increases, we get better and better separation between nearby targets in the water column. Let me draw your attention on the 200 kilohertz side to the collection of five sonar returns that are about halfway through the screen, just above the thermal climb. Go ahead and count those. You can see one, two, three, four, probably five individual arch-shaped returns. Those are five fish that are packed really close together, and we can get information that there are a total of five fish there because the 200 kilohertz beam has higher resolution. Now, that same collection of fish is also displayed on the 83 kilohertz side, but now instead of seeing five, five individual returns, we see much, one much larger, much stronger return, okay? All of that reflected sonar intensity on the 83 kilohertz side is lumped into one big signal and processed that way by the fish finder. So we don't see five small returns, we see one large return. So the 83 kilohertz beam gives us more information because it's broadcasting over a wider cone angle, but at the same time, it provides us with lower resolution information. If we wanna count fish and get reliable information about how big those fish are, if we're using traditional 2D sonar, we're gonna focus specifically on that higher frequency 200 kilohertz beam. Now, over, over time, down, uh, traditional 2D sonar has been augmented by other sonar techniques that look at the same portion of the water column. And the first one we're gonna talk about is called down imaging. Down imaging is going to interrogate a very similar portion of the water column and the bottom that might be interrogated or painted by traditional 2D sonar but it's gonna do it with a different shaped beam and a much higher frequency beam. So if we look in the upper right-hand corner of the slide, we can see a small circle with kind of a red line through it. That, that, those, two, uh, those two images or that image illustrates the difference in beam shape between the down imaging beam, which is very narrow from front to back, but wide from side to side. It's almost broadcast in a fan shape, okay? versus the traditional 2D sonar beam, which is circular in shape, narrow at the top of the beam, much wider as that beam passes through the water column. Now, down imaging and 2D sonar have different beam shapes. They also have much different sonar frequencies. Remember what I said before, as frequency, sonar frequency increases, resolution or target separation increases. This particular down image you're looking at was collected with a frequency of about 1.2 megahertz that's six times higher in frequency than the 200 kilohertz image that we looked at for traditional 2D sonar a little while ago. As the frequency increases, the resolution or the target separation increases. And so the combination of the higher frequency beam and the much different beam shape give us pictures in down imaging that are picture-like images. Much, much easier for us to interpret than the blobograms we get from traditional 2D sonar. And so here what we're looking at is a, is a break line. We're transitioning from shallow water on the right to deeper water on the left of that image. 
and all of those structures that you see scattered around that down image are individual log fish cribs that are kind of built in Lincoln log style. The, the resolution of down imaging here is sufficient to let us see each individual log that is used to build that, those cribs. We can see one fish uh, that is uh, kind of high in the water column about midway through the picture. Fish and down imaging show up as bright white spots instead of as arches. And we'll see some examples of those, uh, some more examples of those as we go along. The reason they look different is because of the different beam shapes between traditional 2D sonar, that big wide beam that the fish spends a lot of time in swimming through to give us the arch-like shape versus a much more narrow beam. The fish doesn't spend nearly as much time in that down imaging beam, so we don't get arch-shaped returns. We get little bright spots. Here's an example, uh, and this is a little video clip that we'll run in a second, of what, uh, what uh, a collection of fish looks like in 2D sonar and in down imaging at the same time. And so if we look at the very top half of that screen, we see a bunch of fish in traditional 2D sonar, these arch-shaped returns. And at the bottom, we're going to see individual little bright spots. And so we go ahead and run the video. We'll see those fish kind of march from right to left across the screen. Here, the fish are actually swimming through the beam. You can look at my boat speed at 0.2 miles an hour. The boat is functionally stationary. Here, the fish are moving through that beam. We get arch-shaped returns in 2D sonar. We get individual little bright spots for those fish in down imaging. So we're seeing the same fish on two halves of the screen, but we're seeing different shapes for the returns because of the different beam shapes for those two sonar techniques. Now, when we look at the size and intensity of the down imaging return, the bright spots for those fish, the brightness of the return and the size of the return are very reliable indicators of the overall size of the fish. Sometimes, uh, in, our, in our traditional 2D sonar view, that, that 2D sonar technology can fool us about the overall size of the fish that are within the beam. Even a small fish that spends a lot of time in that wide 2D sonar beam will give a reasonably intense return. But because the, the down imaging beam is much more narrow, no fish spends a lot of time in it. Now the size and intensity of those down imaging returns are very reliable indicators of the overall size of the fish. So what we see in this down image is, uh, is a gentle transition to a main lake basin. We have basin over on the left-hand side. We've got some low-growing scraggly weeds, the very tail out of the weed growth on the right-hand side. Over on top of those scraggly weeds, we've got a collection of 20 or 30 or 40, I can't count them from this far away, um, small, weak returns. Each of those little bright spots, like somebody has taken a salt shaker and sprinkled it on the return, each of those bright spots is a fish. Now, those bright spots are small, they're relatively dim compared to the one much larger return that we see over on the left-hand side. Here we have one individual sonar return, down imaging return that is substantially brighter than those little guys we see over the weed line, right? That's one big predator that is hanging out off the weed line, probably deciding when to go make its next trip into the weed line buffet and go dine on some of those small bay fish that we see over there. So down imaging, as we see from this illustration, is a very reliable indicator of fish size. We're looking for the intensity, the brightness, and the size of those down imaging returns. Um, down imaging is also a really good tool for helping us count individual fish. And, and a big reason for that has to do with that frequency of the beam, okay? The high frequency uh, down imaging beam is going, to, is going to give us the target separation we need to count individual fish that are really close together. So let me draw your attention now to the 2D sonar return that we see up on the top half of this view. And as we look at that 2D sonar return, we can see one, two, maybe three well-isolated arch-shaped returns, right? We see one that's kind of hovering above the little pile of nonsense that we see there at the bottom, right? It's a little blobogram of a bunch of different bunch of returns that are really packed in close together, kind of hard to make sense out of what that thing is, whatever it happens to be. And then to the right of that, we see a couple of returns that are arch-shaped and higher in the water column. And so from a traditional 2D sonar perspective, the way I would interpret this view is I've got three fish. We've got one hovering over 
maybe a brush pile or something like that. And we've got two that are well separated. Now, take a look at that one return that is kind of hovering over top of the structure. Notice that it has it is painted with a more intense set of colors than the other two fish are, right? The brighter that 2D sonar return looks, the more intense its color is. That's how people often interpret the relative size of the fish. And so a 2D sonar specialist might look at that return and say, you've got one larger fish over a piece of structure. We've got a couple of smaller fish off to the side. Now down imaging is gonna solve that mystery for us. So when we click again and get rid of our little blue box, now we're gonna see the down imaging view of that, that exact area imaged at exactly the same time. So the, the mystery, the blob of brush, the, the return that we can't really make sense out of in down imaging is actually mostly a collection of small fish. They're all packed in really close together. We can see individual isolated bright white spots. They're kind of hovering over a little rock or something on the bottom. You can see that bright little hump that is just below that mass of fish. That's what all those smaller fish are associated with. Now look just above that pile of small fish. We've got one dim small return, a small fish that on our 2D sonar view, we're led to believe is actually the largest fish in that collection. It's just a small fish that's spending lots of time in that traditional 2D sonar beam. So it provides a bright white return. Now, what are the largest fish in this view? We see them in down imaging. Those are the returns that are slid off to the side, off to the right there. We've got the largest fish in that whole collection is the one that is just to the right of that collection of small fish. He's got a smaller buddy that is off to the right as well. You'll see that very frequently in, high, in using these high resolution, high frequency sonar techniques that very often the larger fish are gonna be holding off structure. The structure might be packed with smaller fish, you know, eater size, bait fish, things like that, right? But the larger predators, they'll hang off to the side until it's time to cruise in for a quick meal. Now, because down imaging has that high frequency, high resolution, excellent target separation, it's also the tool of choice for identifying fish that are buried in structure. It's easy to see fish using really any of the sonar techniques that are up above and around structure separated from it, but down imaging is a great tool for looking inside the structure. So here what we have is a low growing weed bed. Okay, so the weeds are extending three or four feet off the bottom in this image. We can see in down imaging the individual weed stalks growing up off the bottom. In 2D sonar, we might just see blocks of sonar returns that, that illustrate the, the entirety of the weed bed without being able to see the spaces between the weed clumps or the spaces between the weeds themselves. That's what we see here, especially if we look on the right-hand side of this image, we see a collection of weeds interspersed with a whole bunch of bright white spots, fish that are holding inside the weed bed rather than adjacent to or above it. Easy for us to use a high frequency, high resolution beam like the down imaging beam to look into that structure. And this is gonna work just as well if you think about fish hiding in brush piles, um, in fish cribs and down wood, anything that fish can hide inside of, be really hard to see with traditional 2D sonar, but a high frequency technique like down imaging makes it easy for us to identify those fish. Now down imaging, I, I consider it to be the ultimate mystery solver in terms of things that are directly beneath the boat. So again, let's turn our attention to the traditional 2D sonar view that we see up on top. It's, it's a very busy 2D sonar uh, image. We see one large kind of rounded off return that is connected to the bottom there. I think a, a reasonable interpretation of what that rounded red, bright red return would be, would be maybe a rock or something like that. Now all around above and to the, and to the right of that rock, we've got a whole mass of other returns. Now, some of those look arch-shaped, so they're probably fish, but that's probably not all fish. There's something else that is providing all of those sonar returns, but identifying what that thing is that is providing that return, whatever that piece of cover might be that maybe is holding some fish is exceptionally hard to do from that traditional 2D sonar view. Now, over on the left-hand side of that 2D sonar view, we see some streaky returns. Okay, now those are fish 
as our boat speed slows down, and you notice my boat speed here is 0 0.3 miles per hour, then those arches that we see tend to get stretched out and streaky. And so a ver perfectly reasonable interpretation of this 2D sonar view is that we've got some fish probably over on the left-hand side. We've got some piece of structure maybe based around a rock there in the middle. There's probably some fish around that structure as well. But that's the limit of the information we can get from that 2D sonar view. But when we look at the down imaging view, now we get a crystal clear perspective of exactly what we're looking at. There's no rock here at all. Instead, what we have is that large mass of return is a big down tree that's laying down, kind of laying down on the bottom, okay? That tree is connected to its original root ball. We can see all the, we can see many of the original roots from that tree there where the tree meets the bottom and then sticking up in the water column as well. So that hard return isn't a rock, it's just wood that is vertical in the water rather than horizontal. Now notice all around that tree, all inside and around that tree, are large numbers of individual bright white sonar returns. Those are fish that are hanging around in that tree. Notice where the larger fish are. They're not in the tree. They're off to the side of the tree, right? Very often, the larger predators, as I said before, will be hanging out near the structure, run into the structure to grab a quick meal, and then beat feet out of there again. So down imaging, a terrific mystery solver here. What is that bright, what is that mass of 2D sonar return? Well, it turns out to be a tree, tree packed with lots of fish. Now here's an example of of using uh, traditional, uh, or a traditional 2D sonar and down imaging in conjunction to tell us when not to make a cast. So, so as we look at that traditional 2D sonar view at the top, we have a hard bottom to soft bottom transition. We have hard bottom, the bright dark, I guess the dark red stripe that's moving from left to right, and then soft bottom more on the, on the left-hand side of that return. Uh, right where the hard and the soft bottom come together, we have four returns that all look like individual arches. And if you're a walleye angler like I am, then you might look at that collection of returns and think, oh, I got four walleyes sitting right where they're supposed to be on a hard bottom, soft bottom transition. Maybe I should throw a jig back there and try to get one of those fish to bite. But doing so would be a mistake because those aren't fish at all. Instead, that is a perfectly arch-shaped log sitting on the bottom, right? If all the only tool we have available to us is traditional 2D sonar, then casting that jig in a minnow back that, back, you know, back behind the boat into that area is a recipe for a snag, right? Instead of a recipe for a fresh walleye dinner. Down imaging shows us what that object is. There's no guesswork involved. There's no interpretation skill. Not trying to figure out what something is based on how intense the color is, what the shapes are, things like that. I look at that picture and I see log sitting on the bottom, and I know, don't cast there. Now, <clears throat> down imaging and traditional 2D sonar are techniques that look beneath the boat, beneath the transducer. A dramatic revolution in our ability to find fish faster came with the introduction of side imaging. Side imaging takes that very high frequency down imaging beam that's narrow from front to back, wide from side to side, high frequency so we have excellent target separation and resolution. And instead of directing it down beneath the boat, we're gonna direct it off to the sides of the boat, to the left side and to the right side. Now side imaging allows us to generate picture-like images of structure and fish up to 400 feet on either side of the boat. Now that's kind of the maximum range, okay? In general terms, the way I use side imaging is to use a range of say 100 to 150 feet on the left side and on the right side. Now I want you to think about what 150 feet to the left and the right really means. 150 feet to the left and 150 feet to the right, that's easy math for me to do. That's a total of 300 feet or 100 yards. So side imaging is very much akin to taking your boat and driving it down the 50 yard line at Lambeau Field and seeing the entire field from goal line to goal line. If there is structure and fish on that entire football field, you'll be able to see it using side imaging by doing nothing more than driving your boat in a straight line. So if you can drive your boat in a straight line, just crack that throttle to idle, drive your boat at two, three, maybe four miles an hour, 
You're going to be able to use side imaging to get picture-like images of structure in fish. Easy to interpret, easy to find the fish. Now, the title of my talk was, Is That a Fish? So let's focus specifically on what fish look like in side imaging. And we'll see a perfect example of this in the small box inset that you're going to see on the right-hand side of that side imaging view. Fish and side imaging, in general terms, are going to show up as bright white spots with a dark sonar shadow. That dark sonar shadow is going to be on the side of the fish opposite the boat's path. Here the boat is driving down the middle of that dark stripe that you see running down the middle of the side imaging view. In that zoomed in box that we see, one individual bright white spot, that's the fish's body. It's reflecting sonar energy back to the transducer so it appears really bright. Now that fish's body is blocking a portion of the bottom from actually being painted by that side imaging beam. So that fish is casting a sonar shadow. Just like if you go outside and the tall tree will cast a nice dark shadow by blocking the sun's energy from hitting a, a portion of the ground, here that fish's body is blocking a portion of the sonar energy from hitting that part of the bottom on the other side of the fish, opposite where the boat is. And so we're looking for, when we're trying to find fish in side imaging, bright white spots, dark sonar shadows. And if there's any separation at all, between the bright spot and the dark sonar shadow, then 100% of the time, that's a fish. Um, because the, uh, the frequency of the side imaging beam is very high, here this, uh, this uh, image we're looking at right now is one of the Humminbird mega side imaging pictures. And so mega side imaging uses a frequency of 1.2 megahertz, again, six times higher in frequency than the traditional 2D sonar beam, allows us to count fish that are very close together. And here we see again in that zoomed in box is we see one, two, three, four, five, I would say six dark sonar shadows. Most of those sonar shadows have an associated bright white spot. Now with mega side imaging, sometimes it's much easier to see the dark sonar shadow than it is to see the bright spot, especially when the bottom has some hardness to it, uh, sand, gravel, rock, things like that. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But what I see here are six individual fish, nice, large, bright returns, dark sonar shadows. These are large fish. These, this is the hallmark of lots of nice walleyes, a little wolf pack of walleyes out hunting in relatively shallow water. You can see, look at my time up there, 11.31 p.m. and nine feet of water. So I'm out trolling well after dark looking to find fish like that. And when I'm out night trolling for walleyes, when I see side imaging returns like that, I know that it's just about time to be game on. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in this part of the world is to go over to Green Bay in the spring and hunt big pre- and post-spawn walleyes. And my first trip ever over to Green Bay was five or six years ago. I went in with very little prior information. I didn't have a collection of waypoints. All I had was some general concept of how to fish for the fish once I found them. Well, when I went over to Green Bay for the first time, when I go to any new body of water that I've never been to before, or even to a, a body of water I spend lots of time on, I use side imaging not to find spots, not to find structure. I use side imaging to find fish. And so let's take a look at the right-hand side of that side imaging view there. There we see a large collection, maybe 12 or 15 individual bright white spots with dark sonar shadows. That's what I'm looking for when I'm hunting big pre- and post-spawn walleyes in cold water is a group of returns like that. Those are all, well, I don't know if they're all walleyes, but certainly many of them are walleyes. Based on the kinds of fish we catch, we cast into areas like that. Now, how do I use a return like that to actually help me catch fish? Again, I drive my boat in a straight line. I see where the fish are in side imaging. I use my hummingbird system to go and drop a waypoint on top of those fish. And then using my chart view, I circle back on top of that waypoint, start casting to where the fish were. Now that's an important distinction because side imaging is a historical technique. It shows me where the fish were when I drove past them. It doesn't show me where the fish are. That's when I need to use a technique like live imaging that we'll look at in a little while. Um, now the distance between the bright white spot and the dark sonar shadow tells us a lot about where that fish is in the water column. Here we have a large collection of fish that are really close to the bottom, small distances between bright spot and dark sonar shadow. This is characteristic of fish 
in a moving water system in a river. Now, this happens to be a group of walleyes from the Fox River, one of the tributaries to Green Bay. This is in late March or early April when there's lots of fish that have run up in the river. There's lots of flow that pushes those fish to the bottom or off to the shorelines. And so when fish are very closely bottom oriented, we're looking for returns like we see here with very small distances. Functionally, the bright white spot and the dark sonar shadow are touching each other. That's how we know that fish are on the bottom. When we look at the next image, we're gonna see a collection of a large number of suspended fish. Now, how do I know these fish are suspended in the water column? I'm gonna look for large distances between bright spots and dark sonar shadows. And it'll be hard for me to pick out an individual example for you here in this format, but if you look and find bright white spots and then look off to one side or the other and find that large associated dark sonar shadow, <clears throat> that's what I'm talking about by talking about a large distance between sonar shadow and bright white sonar return. All these fish suspended high in the water column. Fishing a jig and live bait or jig and plastic, probably a poor decision here, right? Because it's gonna go and fit in the, and be having that lure beneath all the fish. Here we might choose a crankbait or choose a top water, something that's gonna be at the fish's level or above. So knowing where that fish is in the water column, using that information from side imaging, helps us make informed fishing decisions. <clears throat> Sometimes, depending upon the bottom composition, it can be hard to see the bright white spot, okay? This is an example of that. This is a large number of fish scattered over a hard bottom area. In side imaging, hard bottom is very bright. Uh, as we see here. So we have a very bright bottom that can kind of mask or hide the bright white sonar return. But what's easy to see, the dark sonar shadows. It looks like somebody has taken a pepper shaker and sprinkled it all over my side imaging view, right? Each of those dark sonar shadows, all those isolated dark spots, they all come from one individual fish. So when I'm fishing over a hard bottom area, and if you'd like to fish walleyes or smallmouth bass, fish that spend a lot of time over hard bottom, Sometimes it's hard to see the bright white spots, but if it looks like somebody has sprinkled pepper all over your side imaging view, those are fish that are associated with that hard bottom area. That's how I use side imaging in that context. Now, side imaging is a great tool for fishing panfish, sunfish and crappies, especially when they are in on the spawn. And so here we see a beautiful panfish spawning colony. We can see the individual uh, beds that the fish have fanned out, those are the dark circles. We can see some of the brighter surrounding area around each of the dark circles. That's the hard bottom, the sand that has been ejected from the nest when the fish fans it out. Easy to see the structure. Look at some of those individual uh, beds themselves, especially maybe on the upper left-hand side. You'll see not only the dark bed, you'll see bright white sonar returns. Those are fish that are sitting on the beds. Makes it really easy to go and focus on colonies that haven't been picked clean by the worm and bobber brigade, right? We can go and find colonies that actually still have fish on them, right? And when you do that, it makes it easy for you to find quality fish like this one. So shh, don't tell anybody, that's the secret. That's your, that's your gift for watching the seminar today. Learn to look, learn to use side imaging to find colonies that haven't been picked clean yet. Here's another example of a panfish spawning colony. And in that zoomed in box on the right-hand side, we can kind of see the whole collection of what side imaging can provide us. It shows us the bed structure, that, that kind of oblong dark area. That's the bed that the panfish is sitting on. We can see the fish, the bright white spot, and we can see that fish's sonar shadow. All in one, side imaging provides us with that kind of information about where structure and fish were when we painted them with the side imaging beam. Now, panfish aren't the only fish that, make, that build beds. What we see here on the left-hand side is a collection of seven or eight well-separated larger beds, some of which have bright white spots. That's the hallmark of smallmouth bass beds over a hard bottom area like this one, okay? A lot of smallmouth anglers, when they're going and fishing for bedding fish, will use their eyes. So they love bright sunny days like we have here in beautiful park falls with, uh, with calm winds where it's really easy to see into the water. But what about the cloudy days? What about the days where there's a little bit of chop or stained water? can make it really hard to see into the water with your eyes, but side imaging doesn't have those limitations. It allows you to see into the water under all conditions. Here's a beautiful side image of, of a down tree in the water column. Look at all the bright white spots around that tree, kind of between the middle of the view and the tree returns, and then the dark sonar shadows for all of those bright white spots as well. When I see returns like this, that's the hallmark of 
a piece of structure that's loaded with crappies. And if you have kids or grandkids, this is a picture of my son uh, with, uh, with one of his buddies and one of my buddies from out on a crappie trip. This is a great way to keep the kids busy. And when, those, when the kids wear out those fish, all you have to do is drive the boat in a straight line, find another, another piece of down timber like that, another piece of structure that is packed with bright white returns, you'll get those kids right back on the crappies. Here's an example of, of a extensive weed bed, relatively shallow. Look over on the right-hand side in particular, you're gonna see lots of individual bright white sonar returns with dark sonar shadows. This is characteristic, again, of panfish. We see this many of them, the bright white spots tell me that they are quality sized panfish, like the one that we see here, okay? So again, the theme is the same, bright white spot, dark sonar shadow. Here's an example that bass anglers will love. Lots of bass anglers will spend their time flipping around boat docks and things like that. We see a boat dock on the left-hand side of this side image. We can see some of the framing, the shadows from the framing, and I want you to look out under the last section of that boat dock. What do you see under there? Two bright white spots with two dark sonar shadows. Those are bass that have pulled underneath that dock and are hiding there, bass just like that one, okay? So if you're a bass angler who likes to fish docks and are looking at a row of 30, don't fish each individual dock, right? Drive past them once with side imaging, see which docks are holding fish, drop waypoints on them, cycle back around, and spend your time fishing fish rather than empty structure. Um, one of the uh, innovations that Humminbird has brought to the market that is unique to Humminbird is called 360 imaging. 360 imaging takes that high resolution, high frequency side imaging beam, mounts it inside of a rotating transducer. So now we're not just gonna be looking off to the side, now we're gonna rotate that side looking beam around in a circle to give us a 360 degree wide view. I think this is a little video. You'll see that beam rotating around uh, from uh, you know, in sort of a clockwise fashion. As that beam rotates around, what we're looking for for identifying fish are bright white spots with dark sonar returns, just like we were in side imaging. Now, as that beam rotates around from one rotation to the next, we'll see those fish move, right? Fish have the nasty habit of swimming around. And so we can use a tool like 360 imaging to show us how those fish are moving around. Now, all those techniques that we've talked about so far are all historical. They showed us where structure and fish were, we painted them with our beam. Humminbird also has what's called live imaging with a tool that's called Mega Live. Live imaging takes a high frequency sonar beam, projects it into the water and shows us real time information. Not where the structure and fish were, but where the structure and fish are. Live imaging is available in three different modes. We can either look directly beneath the boat in what's called down mode. We can project that high frequency beam forward of the boat so we can see where we're gonna be casting, structure and fish moving around, that's forward mode. Or we can get kind of a landscape view, it's called landscape mode, a, a, a panoramic vista. We can see not, not just our casting lane, which would be forward mode, but our entire casting window, which would be landscape mode. Now what I have here are a couple of video clips, hopefully that will play well for you guys, of mega live imaging uh, in each of the three modes. So we'll go ahead and start this first one. Okay, this first, uh, this first uh, movie is actually vertical jigging for rainbow trout. I'll have you go ahead and click it again so we can see what we're gonna catch here. What we see happening there in the, in the middle of the video is a jigging ramp that is bouncing up and down. Okay, and then we see a fish that is suspended high in the water column and eventually another fish that's gonna come in low in the water column. And it's a little herky-jerky, that's because of, of our live connection, we apologize for that. Uh, but we're gonna see that fish come up and eventually eat that jigging wrap and then get caught. And I'm gonna attest to you right now that the fish we're seeing right there on the live imaging view getting caught and retrieved is the fish that I'm holding there in that picture, that really nice rainbow trout. So live imaging is a tool that we can use to see not where the trout were, but where the trout are and how we can present lures to them. Uh, we can use a forward looking mode uh, for live imaging as a tool to follow our lures on the retrieve. And this is another little video, it might be a little herky jerky for you viewers at home, but we'll go ahead and play it anyway. Uh, what we're gonna see in this video is 
eventually me casting out and we're gonna see that lure splash into the water at the very far left hand side of the image. We just saw it splash there. That's the lure entering the water at about 70 feet away. And then during the retrieve, we're gonna see that lure pass from right to left. Uh, and it's way smoother than you guys are seeing it right now. We apologize for the herky jerky connection here, but we can follow that lure all the way as it swims back through the water column. And one of the great, one of the great tools that we have access to with this mode of live imaging is to actually see fish come up and attack the lure too. Uh, we can use live imaging not only in open water, but in an ice fishing situation. And so here we have a little video clip of, of uh, largemouth bass fishing with some, um, uh, with a lipless crankbait. So you can see that lipless crankbait being kind of ripped up and down here uh, in the middle and a, and a fish return or two kind of inspecting it. You'll see me kind of rip that bait too hard and those fish get out of there. They're not too excited about what they see, right? But they didn't go very far, right? They might have, if you were using traditional 2D sonar, you might have seen them disappear from your view and say, oh, well, I scared those fish away. But in fact, because live imaging casts a pretty broad net, we can see that those fish didn't go that far. Actually, just changing my presentation, holding that lure stationary, allowed that fish to come back, cycle around, and eat it like we see there. And so we get really important information from live imaging, not just about structure and fish, where they are, but what they're doing. We're getting information about fish behavior. Now, landscape mode is the last of the, of the live imaging modes, and we'll go ahead and, and run this video for you as well. This is a live imaging picture of a collection of large walleyes all on a shallow flat. And I apologize for it being herky-jerky for you viewers at home. Each of those bright white spots and dark sonar shadows, that represents an individual fish. And by casting to these fish, we're able to figure out what they were. These fish are all walleyes. And one of them was this dirty 30 that I caught up on Green Bay, one of the seven that our group caught over the course of a weekend. Live imaging has that power. It can put you on top of not just fish, but the precise fish you're looking for, these trophy caliber fish. This last image that we're gonna look at here is one that I collected, a little video clip I collected just a couple of days ago on the Mississippi River. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, a chart view, a hummingbird chart view of this wing dam that I'm fishing. It looks like a little L. I have the boat position right in the corner of that L on the upstream side, so to the left of where that wing dam is. And as we go and roll the video, we will see a, um, we'll see how that wing dam lays out. What we see the bright white returns that we see across the middle of the screen, that's the long egg of the long leg of the L. You'll eventually see me turn the transducer so I can see more of that corner of the L because if you focus on that corner, that's where the really interesting things are happening. That's where the moving large bright white spots are. Okay, so I pulled up to this spot I dropped in my live imaging transducer. I took a good look at what was around and I saw that the fish I wanted to target were on that corner. On my second cast, I caught that fish, okay? Live imaging is a tool that helps me identify in real time where the fish are and what they're doing. Live imaging told me that the fish I wanted to catch, the walleyes I wanted to catch were isolated or concentrated right at the corner of that wing dam. So rather than working my way from tip to tip and hopefully eventually bumping into those fish, I could park my boat where I needed to be the first time, make the first cast and have it pay off with fish like that. Hopefully now you know how to look at any of the sonar technology you have on your boat from traditional 2D sonar all the way forward to mega live imaging. And now you can answer that question for yourself. Is that a fish? Now you've seen lots of examples, and I hope you can put it to work on your next trip. Hey, I'm Jason Helfen, the Technological Angler. Thanks for joining us during St. Croix Rod's Customer Appreciation Day. Enjoy the rest of the seminars and have a great day.